Imagine going to work and your boss knowing you're not going to bother today. Now imagine doing that over and over again. That's the situation the Warriors find themselves in, writes Martin Devlin in this week's Playing the Ball column. Martin, thanks for taking the time. Amish, great talking to you. We're going to talk about something to do with sport, and it's not Argentina, isn't it? <laughs> well, I was going to say, I thought this column could have equally been written about the All Blacks or even Manchester United as well, but here we are talking about the Warriors. Um, yep. So what's your take? What's, what's going on here? You think they should be uh, reduced to pay-for-play contracts? Yeah, look, I mean, I'm absolutely serious about this. This rot supposedly started in the Anzac round game against Melbourne Storm, where 70 points were put up, and then coach Nathan Brown. I might have even mentioned this before, actually, in an interview with you, um, said that the players uh, gave up, and, that, and that many of them didn't try. Um, from that point on, we've had Stacey Jones, who's now been in charge 10 games. When I wrote the column, he'd been in charge nine games. Six of those games, so I've got press conference audio where he's looking, you know, sitting there with a face like a drop pie and he's sitting there saying, you know, the players don't turn up, they don't want to play for the jersey, there's no pride in it and so forth. And, you know, I wrote this column after the North Queensland game where he said nine of the players went out onto the field and didn't want to play for the Warriors. Now, during the week, Bunty Arfour, who was actually one of the 13, he said um, uh, that, you know, half the boys, half the bros go out there prepared to play, the other half kind of just wind their way into it during a game. Uh, you know, just... Just say that out loud to yourself. You know, this is a professional footballing side. It doesn't matter what code it is. Half the team decides that they don't want to play. Half of them turn up and decide that they might play if they can be bothered when the game's actually going. Look, and what the column that I've written about is say, look around your own workplace today, people. Pick out 13 people, any 13, no matter who it is. Then go up to nine of them and just say, right, that's it. <clears throat> Down tools, feet up. You guys aren't playing today. You know, how many people in any work situation would get away with this? And the answer is none. You know, your boss might let you once, but you'd certainly have some stern words in your ear and you'd certainly have something that reminds you on a piece of paper saying, if that's the way you're going to approach your work, well, then maybe you need to look somewhere else to actually go to work. You know, I think with the Warriors, you know, I've talked about this, ripping their contracts up and making them on pay for play. Pay for play. Um, and a lot of people said, oh, no, you can't do that. The agents said, look, you know, I've had some experience with the employment court over my career. And the way that um, I understand it is that every single contract is negotiable now on every minute of every day. Um, if the Warriors players were upset about that, I would just be sitting there simply as the CEO going, well, you know, take it to the employment court. It's probably going to cost you the best part of 100000 You may win, you may not. But anyone who rings me up, actually, and um, is asking whether to recommend you for another rugby league job, guess what I'm going to tell them? I'm going to tell them that you don't do enough for work. You're never, ever going to play the game again. I'm absolutely serious about this. You know, these Warriors players have had excuse after excuse after excuse. The COVID thing, they're away from their home. You're a young man with a couple of kids. I'm just offering you the chance to go and work doing your job right now, living in a beachside resort in Australia for six months without the screaming children and without the problems that they create and everything else. I know it's going to be hard leaving your family, Hamish. How long do you reckon it's going to take you to get to the airport, mate? 20 minutes? <laughs> yeah. I mean, look, let's be, let's be serious about this. You know, so what do you do with these Warriors players? You know, if this was the All Blacks, we'd be saying, kill the coach. Now mm. I'm saying metaphorically, obviously. It's all Ian Foster's fault. Well, it's not Stacey Jones's fault. We know that. You know, everything else has been tried with these with these guys nothing works they are mollycoddled they are babied they are continually told that you know nothing is their fault and that's how they turn up and play well you know the first thing you do is you look at the ceo and you say who's giving them these messages the funniest thing that i read over the weekend after they got shellacked again on friday night by another 40 points is um oh the warriors aim to finish on a high this this friday or saturday in their last game against the titan the only high bit to that is anyone who actually believes this nonsense has obviously, obviously been smoking something to make them high. They've lost 17 games out of 24 so far. They've won six. Does it really matter if you win the last game? The season is seven wins and 17 losses. How the hell is that a high in any professional sporting franchise anywhere in the world? It's just rubbish, mate, is what it is. And so what needs to change? What needs to change? Because the Warriors, you know... Well, what needs to change no just... is in here. Yeah. If you don't want to turn up for your job, go home. Hmm. Don't come to work again. It's as simple as that. I know you can moan about the fact you've been away and the COVID and everything else. The fact is you're getting paid half a million dollars, mate, to play 24 games a season and you don't want to do it. Well, go and get a job for, with somebody else and see whether they'll pay you. There's no way that sides like the Melbourne Storm would put up with this. There's no way any of those top sides in the NRL would put up with their players saying, oh, I don't play, I've got no pride in the jersey. How long do you reckon any of those guys would still have a job? And I can tell you this, Hamish, without a word of a lie, 
any of those players that leave the Warriors and attempt to get a job at another club, you pull that stunt in the first couple of weeks and then see how good your career is going to go after that. Yeah, they are basically given a free ticket to be useless, hopeless, hapless, and they don't care, mate. So that's my thing. Rip up the contracts, start again. You get paid petrol money to go to training, and I will decide, I'm the Minister of Common Sense here, I will decide whether or not you, you actually pick up your salary at the end of the day. Well, Why like you say, everything else, is, work, everything else has been tried. They might as well uh, give it a crack. Well, there's nothing, else, there's nothing else left, mate. There's nothing else that's going to get through to these guys apart from the money because they know that every week, it don't matter how they play, they're still getting paid. Martin, thanks very much for your time.